leave we had to use you did provoke our hasty sending. Have you heard of Hamlet's transformation? So call it. I entreat you both, being in so young days, brought up with him, that you vouchsafe your rest here in our court some little time. So by your companies to draw him on and to gather so much as from occasion you may glean, whether or to us unknown afflicts him, thus that opened lies within our remedy. We both obey and here give up our souls to be commanded. Excellent, good friends. How dost thou, Guildenstern? Ah, oh, Rosencrantz. Good lads. How do you both? As the indifferent children of the earth. Happy in that we are not over happy. On fortune's cap, we are not the very bottom. Nor the sole of her shoe? <laughs> Neither, my lord. Then you live about her waist, or perhaps in the middle of her favours. Faith, her private swing. In the secret paths of fortune? Oh, most true, she's a strumpet. <laughs> what news? Uh, none, my lord, except that the world's grown honest. And it's doomsday yet. But your news is not true. Let me question more in particular. What have you, my good friends, deserved at the hands of fortune that she sends you to prison hither? Prison, my lord? Denmark's a prison. Well, then is the world one? A goodly one, in which there are many confines, wards, and dungeons, Denmark being one of the worst. We think not so, my lord. Why? Then tis none to you. But there is nothing either good nor bad about it, but thinking makes it so. To me, it is a prison. Well, why, then your ambition makes it. It is too narrow for your mind. <laughs> God, I could be bounded in a nutshell and count myself king of infinite space were it not that I had bad dreams. Which dreams indeed are ambition? For the very substance of the ambitious is merely the shadow of a dream. A dream itself is but a shadow. True, and I hold ambition of so airy and light a quality that it is but a shadow's shadow. Then are our beggars' bodies and our monarchs and outstretched heroes the beggars' shadows? Shall we to the court? For, by my faith, I cannot reason. We'll, we'll wait, wait upon, upon you. you. No such matter. I speak to you like an honest man. I'm most dreadfully attended. But, in the beaten way of friendship, what make you at Elsinore? To visit you, my lord. No other occasion. Were well, you not sent for? Is it of your own inclining? Is it a free visitation? Come, do justly with me. Come, come, nay speak. What should we say, my lord? Why, anything but to the purpose. Were you sent for? There is a kind of confession in your looks which your modesties are not craft enough to colour. I know the good king and queen have sent for you. To what end, my lord? That you must teach me. But let me conjure you by the rights of our fellowship, by the consonancy of our youth, by the obligation of our ever-preserved love. And by what more dear a better proposer could charge you withal? Be even and direct with me whether you are sent for or no! What say you? Nay, hey, sir, I have an eye of you. If you love me, hold not off! My lord, we were sent for. And I will tell you why. I have of late, but wherefore I know not, lost all my mirth, forgone all custom of exercises, and indeed it goes so heavily into my disposition that this goodly frame, the earth, seems to me not a sterile promontory. This excellent canopy, the air, why, it seems no other thing to me than a foul and pestilent congregation of vapours. What a piece of work is man. Man delights not me, no. Nor woman, neither. Though by your smiling you seem to say so. To think, my lord, if you delight not in man, then what lent entertainment the play shall receive from you. What players are that? Even those you were wont to take such delight in. The tragedians of the city. There are the players. Gentlemen, you are welcome to Elsinore. Come, your hands, you are welcome. But my uncle, father, and aunt, mother are deceived. In what, my dear lord? I am but mad north northwest. When the wind is southerly, I know a hawk from a handsaw. Well be with you, gentlemen. Hark you, Guildenstern, and you too. That great baby you see before you is not yet out of his swaddling clouds. <laughs> well, happily, he's the second time come to them, for they say an old man is twice a child. 
Our prophecy comes to tell me of the player's market. You say right, sir. Oh, Monday morning. Twas so indeed. Can by no drift of conference get from him why he puts on this confusion, grating so harshly all his days of quiet with turbulent, dangerous lunacy? He does confess he feels himself distracted, but from what cause he will by no means speak. Nor do we find him forward to be sounded, when we would bring him on to some confession of his true state. Give him a further edge and drive his purpose on to these delights. We shall, my lord. Doctor, save me a word with you. Whole history. The king, sir. I, sir. What of him? In his retirement. Marvellous distempered. With drink, sir? No, my lord, rather with choler. Your wisdom should show itself more richer to signify this to the doctor. For me to put him to this purgation will perhaps plunge him into far more choler. Good, my lord. Put your discourse into some frame, and start not so wildly from my affair. I am tame, sir. Pronounce. The queen, your mother, in most great affliction of spirit, hath sent me to you. You are welcome. Nay, good, my lord, this courtesy is not of the right breed. If it shall please you to make me a wholesome answer, I will do your mother's commandment. If not, your pardon, and my return shall be the end of my business. I cannot. What, my lord? Make you a wholesome answer. My wit's diseased. But, sir, such answer as I can make you shall command, or rather, as you say, my mother. Therefore, no more, but to the matter. My mother, you say? And thus she says your behavior hath struck her into amazement and admiration. <laughs> Wonderful son that can so astonish a mother. But is there no sequel at the heels of this mother's admiration? In part? She desires to speak with you in a closet, ere you go to bed. We shall obey. Were she ten times our mother? Have you any further trade with us? My lord, you once did love me. So I do still, by these makers and stealers. Good my lord, what is your cause of this temple? You do surely bar the door upon your own liberty if you deny your griefs to your friend. Sir, I lack advancement. Well, how can that be? When you have the voice of the king himself in your succession for Denmark. I sir, that while the grass grows, the proverb is something must. Ah, the recorder. Why do you go about to recover the wind of me as if you would drive me into a toil? Oh, my lord, if my duty be too bold, my love is too unmanly. I do not well understand that. Will you play upon this pipe? My lord, I cannot. I pray you. Believe me, I cannot. I do beseech you. I know no touch of it, my lord. <laughs> it is as easy as lying. Govern these vintages with your fingers and thumbs. Give it breath with your mouth and it will discourse most eloquent music. Look, you, these are the stops. But these I cannot command to any utterance <laughs> of harmony. I have not the skill. Why, look you now how unworthy a thing you make of me. You would play upon me. You would seem to know my stops. You would pluck out the heart of my mystery. You would sound me from my lowest note to the top of my compass. And there is much music, excellent voice in this little organ. Yet cannot you make it speak? Do you think I'm easier to be played upon than a pipe? Call me what instrument that you will. Though you can fret me, you cannot play upon me. God bless you, sir. My lord, the queen would speak with you, and presently. Do you see yonder cloud that's almost the shape of a camel? And by the mass, tis like a camel indeed. Methinks it like a weasel. It is backed like a weasel. Or a whale. Very like a whale. Then I will come to my mother by and by. They fool me to the top of my bent. I will come by and by. I will say so. By and by is easily said. Leave me, friends.
I like him not, nor stands it safe with us to let his madness range. Therefore prepare you, I your commission will forthwith dispatch, and he to England along with you. We will ourselves provide. Arm you, I pray you, to this speedy voyage, for we will fetters put upon this fear, which now goes too free-footed. We will haste us.